Hey guys and welcome to this fourth video in this video series of implementing secure CI/CD pipelines. So in this video we will look at how a basic CI/CD pipeline architecture looks like. Then we will have a snippet to show you how uh, this actual build process and the deployment process takes place. Then we will move ahead and see what we are going to create as a part of DevSecOps pipeline. And then again, we'll have a snippet that refers to what we are actually going to make by the end of this video series. Okay, so if we start, the basic CI CD pipeline looks like this. So the GitHub is the place in our case where all the developers, let's say, are uh, ma maintaining their repository, committing the code, and here is the code uh, which we need to build, which is having the final source code of our product. So what we will, what the basic architecture looks like is whenever there is a commit that happens on the master branch. And when we say master branch, let's say we are assuming that the only commit when happens on a master branch happens when there is a new release. So whenever there is a new release and the commit happens, the code, the webhook automatically triggers the CI CD tool which in our case is Jenkins. So whenever there is a commit happen on a master branch or a GitHub repository, Jenkins will trigger all the build automation scripts that we have defined in the pipeline. So how does the pipeline look like and what is the syntax? We will definitely uh, go through it in the other video. So when the control comes to Jenkins, it runs all the automation build scripts and processes all the things that are required to finally build the product and create an executable. Once that is done, let's say all the functional test cases that are defined for the product that are being run and then all the UI test cases. If everything goes well and all these test cases are successfully passed, our Jenkins will create an artifact and store it. So Artifact means the final build that is going to be consumed by the consumer. So we are storing it for our future future use or for our metrics purpose for our tracks. And from here, wherever, wherever we are storing our artifact, Jenkins will take that particular artifact and deploy it to the production environment or the Tomcat server that we are using in this case. So in real, if I just open Jenkins and just show you how this actually look like so you can see so here is the very basic pipeline that we use now if we talk about the nitty-gritty details of these things we will definitely get into all those things but as of now so these are the three stages of the pipeline the first stage is initialize and with this stick we can say all the stages are being passed so I am using this is Jenkins and uh, this is one of the plugin that I am using to uh, show these stages in a nice formatted way. And this is Blue Ocean. I am no expert in Jenkins, but I am trying to learn each day just to uh, get a better idea about how I, I can actually use all the features of Jenkins and that can help us integrate more security in the pipeline easily. Okay, so the first stage is initialize, the second stage is build where these are all the shell scripts or the different steps that are being run by this particular stage and this is the stage this is the step that we have defined uh, and we have said that hey maven please clean and then package this particular project so maven goes ahead and takes care of all the dependencies that are required and here you can see that it has finally built a war file that is stored in this particular place so now when we talk about deploy to Tomcat, the third stage is to take the executable file that is being built and deploy it on the production server for, in our case, we are using Tomcat for the instance. And this is the line that is doing the same thing. It is just uh, using SCP. It is taking the file uh, webapp.war that was created by the build process and it's going in the Tomcat server and it's uh, deploying it inside the web apps directory. So if we go in the Tomcat instance and just use slash web app, we can see the application has been deployed here. 
so it the jenkins takes the code from the github repository builds the whole project and creates an executable file deploys that executable file in the tomcat server so that our user is able to interact with the web application and all in an automated fashion so this is a typical example of how actually the ci cd pipeline works okay so now if we talk about what we are actually going to modify in this what we are going to do to say that hey we have integrated some part of the security in the ci cd pipeline so here is the whole idea what we are going to make so now initially in the earlier side as we can see the process was going from github to jenkins and it was performing some of the basic steps then it was going to artifactory and then it was being deployed on the production instance now these are the steps that we are going to create in the pipeline to ensure that we are integrating the security checks in the pipeline now the first one is we will check the source code that is being committed for any of the sensitive information now it is also one of the emerging things that i am uh, seeing these days that many of the bug bounty reports um, disclose that aws credentials were leak leaking from particular github account or from some kind of source code repository or different api tokens were leaking so this is necessary to make sure that any of the developer unintentionally doesn't commit any of the sensitive information so second is the normal step that we were doing in the earlier stage that was simply building the product for in in our case the web app using maven then we will go through the host vulnerability assessment we are we are going to perform a vulnerability assessment on the operating system where the product is going to be hosted then we are going to integrate source composition analysis and source composition analysis basically means it will go and analyze any of the third party libraries that your product is using whether that whether that library is vulnerability free or not so for an example in the case of equifax hack they were using apache struts so if we are all already able to identify that we are using any kind of vulnerable library then we should either update to the stable version or we should try to identify that we are not using the vulnerable part so once uh, we are we have completed the source co composition analysis this will help us in identifying any of the inherited vulnerabilities from the third party libraries once that is done we'll go ahead and we'll uh, perform a static application security testing that means we will go and take out our code and find different patterns in the code that constitutes a vulnerability so sas refers to analyzing of the code and checking whether there is any vulnerability present then once we have completed the sas we will go to test and that is dynamic application security testing in which we will try to mimic the behavior of an attacker and we will try to attack the web application from the outside and during this whole process in the first part uh, the container security testing is not included but uh, eventually i'll add the container security testing part in the video series so if there is any kind of docker image or a container that we are building uh, through this process and it it if it finds any of the container then it will uh, process some of the actions that are specific to the security scanning of containers now instead of only ui and functional test cases we have integrated all these things in the ci cd pipeline and if it passes all these test cases then we are going to say that this build is secure then then if we compare it to the previous build because we are we are having already so many security checks that are built inside this and then we are going to deploy this particular build in the production on the other hand whatever the vulnerabilities that we are uh, getting from all these different tools we will feed them in a vulnerability management tool that is defect dojo in our case and we'll use it to integrate with jira that is for bug tracking now one of the ways is to like let's say you use the veracode for performing the sas and veracode is one of the commercial tools 
So one of the ways is either you create a connection from uh, Veracode to Jira and then another tool to Jira and have a separate integration of different tools with Jira or to reduce much of your task what you can do is you can feed all the results into a vulnerability correlation tool like Defect Dojo and Defect Dojo can be integrated with Jira. So in this way you will uh, reduce much of your work and also this is a managed and much simpler way to integrate things with uh, Jira. So this is the whole idea and the whole things that are that we are going to make uh, in this video series. And just to give you a brief idea, there are also some of the things that are not mentioned there and we have integrated it. So this is the pipeline that we are going to create. So if you can see uh, earlier only initialize was there and then build was there and then deploy to Tomcat was there. And now what we have done is once the code is committed, we are checking for different git secrets. So it took around 50 seconds seconds for this stage to complete. So it's particularly fine. Our one of the main goal that here is we want to integrate only the steps that takes ideally takes less than five minutes in the pipeline. So here is the report that the code gave us and you can see these are different kind of API tokens that it, it says that it has found in the commit history. So we can just go through this uh, different findings and check what are the different vulnerabilities. Then we are adding the SAST here, sorry, the source composition analysis step, then the SAST and after the deploying we are, uh, after we have done deploying it on the instance, then we are uh, doing some of the port scan to check whether there is no such misconfiguration and only the intentional ports are exposed and then we'll perform a dynamic application security testing. Then we'll perform a web application vulnerability scan with Nikto. We'll go through and add some of the SSL checks and then we'll take all these results and we'll upload to Defect Dojo for the reason of managing all the vulnerabilities at one place. So this is the whole idea uh, that, uh, that we are going to learn and implement in this video series. I hope you guys like this and uh, thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we will move towards starting the hands-on exercises and creating our lab environment and jumping into and getting our hands dirty with uh, different security things in the CI/CD pipeline. So thanks for watching this video and have a great time.